Hi everyone, it's Phil Millership here, and I thought I would today just share a little, a little of, uh, of one of my passions. It's not a massive, massive passion, although uh, <clears throat> it might be getting towards a massive passion, but, uh, but we'll see. But I'll just share a little with you. Um, I shoot digital. Um, this is my little uh, Fuji X100S. Uh, and I, I, I use the Fuji system, and obviously we, most of us these days, do shoot digitally. Um, I came to photography a little bit late in life, um, not that long ago, and I shot on film before I started sort of learning how to try and do things properly. Um, but I literally just switched the camera on, probably stuck it in program or full auto or whatever, as a lot of us do these days, still with digital, press the button and you get good pictures. You get great photos. And I, and I say that was on film. When I started working professionally um, as a photographer and having to learn my craft, if you like, I was. it was just when digital was starting to come in. So I, I, I really sort of came came straight into digital and, and learned reasonably quickly uh, how to try and get the best out of the digital cameras. Uh, so, so my passion, if you like, is is film, because I didn't learn in film, and and it's just a magic um, way of of shooting images. It, it's it's gorgeous. Now that's that's me saying that, and and obviously I still use digital and still have to. But I just thought I'd share a little of of uh, some of the cameras that I've got. Some of them I've started to use, um, and and others I've got still to try out. Uh, but the, the systems that you've got in front of us here, this is the, the big one here. Obviously it is big, you can see it. It's the uh, Linhoff Technorama 617. Um, it shoots on 120 roll film, which was this, the, the film format um, that professional photographers, if, if you'd have sort of 30 years ago or whatever, if you'd have had your wedding uh, photos done, chances are that your wedding photographer would have been shooting on 120 roll film. Um, and on a standard medium format camera, which is what they would have been using, you'll get anything between 12 and 15 frames per roll of film. So you'll appreciate with digital, we, we tend to shoot a few more than that. Um, uh, so we tend to be a little bit less disciplined. And one of the things about film is it, it forces you to think about the discipline of what you're doing. This camera shoots 120 roll film, as I mentioned, but on one roll of film, um, I get four pictures because each, each or four shots, each shot is, is approximately that size that you see on the back of the camera there. It's a six centimetre by 17 centimetre negative. And to give you a sort of a comparison, if that negative or, or that transparency, let's say, depending on what you're shooting on, is scanned, it will give you a, a, a megapixel equivalent of around about 140, 160 megapixels as a standard scan. Um, so when you consider the sort of cameras that we're used to using, uh, camera phones are what, up to eight megapixels, sometimes higher. Uh, my little Fuji is uh, 16 megapixel. My old Canon system was 22 and a bit megapixels. So you can see actually film is still capable of producing stunning resolution if it's worked within the correct way. Uh, but this, this camera is gorgeous. It's obviously it's a, it's a panoramic camera. It shoots a massive negative there, which is panoramic. Uh, so it's, it's perfect for, for big landscapes and big views. Um, and I'll, I'll post one or two of the shots. I don't use this camera as often as I would like to. I tend to take it away on holiday with me uh, and, and look for special images that this camera will shoot. But everything's manual. You can't, you, I have to use a light meter to read the light. You set the aperture, the shutter. You, you don't look through the viewfinder, you look through this here. So you're not looking through the film plane. So you have to set your focus uh, on a judgment, on, a, on a, a judgment of the distance that you're shooting to. So that's my Linhoff there. Gorgeous camera. It's not the sort of thing you walk around with, really. You tend to, I stick it on the tripod and it goes over my shoulder. I try not to knock the microphone. Now that's my little Fuji Digital. So these are some of the, get rid of that. These are some of the film cameras that I've got. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. What I will pro probably do is do some individual uh, little YouTube pieces on some of the, the cameras. This shoots 
120 roll film, the same, not 35 mil. This shoots 120 roll film. It's a little Bella 66. Um, when I got it, the shutter wasn't working properly. I managed to fix the shutter. It's only got three shutter speeds. 100th of a second, a 50th of a second, and a bulb setting. So you press the button, the shutter stays open as long as you've got the button pressed. And also, interestingly, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be wound on to fire. So when you press the button, it takes a picture. If I'd got a roll of film in here, it would double expose or triple expose. It hasn't even got a focus ring on it. So you, so you have to really set this thing up. I don't even know what the aperture is on it. Um, it's got a fixed aperture. Uh, you've only got three shutter speeds and no focus. Um, so you'll see you'll see images off the little Bella on Flickr, um, and they're interesting. So anybody that's into their uh, into their lamography, I think it's called, um, you'll find uh, that this this camera is fun to play with. Uh, but would it produce stunning images? Stunning, perhaps, but but perhaps not in terms of their resolution or sharpness. But I, I may stick a roll of film through that and see what we get. This is a little Yashica. It's the Minister 3. It meters on the front. That camera doesn't meter, by the way, same as my Linhoff. You have to meter yourself, so you have to use a light meter um, or judge the light if you're able to. Uh, but this, this uh, little Yashica here, lovely cameras, um, has got a, a, a light meter around the front of the, of the lens there. So you can actually meter it uh, tells you what the light value is on the top, and then you set the aperture and the shutter accordingly. Again, that's got a roll of film in it, so as soon as I've run that through, um, we'll post some sample images, and I'll do a, I'll do a, a much more in-depth look at the, uh, at the Yashica Minister 3 for you as well. This is another little Yashica, which I'll just touch on. Very, very similar uh, to the Minister 3. This is the Minister 2. Um, Meter on the top the same. There's the meter there. If you can see it there, that's the meet, That's the way the camera meters light. So again, you meter your image, look at the gauge, set the camera off the gauge, wind the film on there. Has this one got a roll of film in? No, it hasn't. So you wind on there and away you go. And you just keep going as, as, as far as you want to. Get that all the way there. Um, and these two cameras, by the way, and this one as well, are rangefinder cameras. So when you look through the viewfinder, you're not looking through the lens, like a, a dig, uh, digital single lens reflex camera. You're actually looking through this little, little window here. But when you look through there, you get a split image. And by adjusting the focus, uh, focus ring of the camera there, you can realign, you can align the images, and when those when those lines are in in in, uh, in focus together or or together, your camera is in focus. So your image is in focus. So those are rangefinder cameras. Uh, this is just a stand, standard, almost point and shoot. These three rangefinder, and you'll notice they've all got that separate little window there. Uh, which the camera uses to compare. You've got a focusing window and a viewfinder window. This is my Fujika 35EE. Um, again, it's a rangefinder. It will meter. It's got its own little meter tucked up there. So I meter the scene. Um, look through. Look at the the meter on the top. That's like having your own little portable light meter, effectively. Uh, and set the camera accordingly. The one thing that the uh, the, the uh, Fujika 35EE has got, it's got an auto setting, so it will almost give you point and shoot. All you have to do is pick the appropriate shutter speed uh, that the camera's telling you will work. And it gives you a little indication in the viewfinder if you're either under or overexposed. Um, so there's a little bit more. What's, what's interesting about this one, you'll notice on these two cameras, the winder is on the top. On the Fujika, uh, the wind is on the bottom, which is sort of in the wrong place, but it's not. When you're using the camera, it's really easy to just, just wind on. This has got a roll of filming. Again, if we have a closer look at this camera at a later date, by then I'll have some, uh, I'll have some images to share with you. And if any, anybody wants to comment, some of you out there might even have these cameras and have a little bit more experience of them than I have. So that's my fun with film, if you like. 
um, the big boy there uh, and the I've covered them up now but you can see them uh, and the uh, three range finders the two Yashikas the Fujika um, I've got a camera on its way to me which I'll do uh, as well and that's a Vera uh, a Vera one uh, and that's a uh, a gorgeous camera to behold but I'll share that with you at a later date so I hope you've enjoyed that and um, click on the channel uh, subscribe and uh, hopefully we can have some fun with film and we did take care